Um, Ms. Ayers, if you'd like to introduce item Foxtrot meeting rules for Board of Trustees. Thank you, sir. Um, you're going to be sick of hearing me at some point. Um, also, have some slides up on the screen. Um, one of the things we've discussed since I got here is the idea of how do we make our meetings work most efficiently for um, the getting um, accomplished all the business necessary. Um, I believe you had started this process with Mr. Wright earlier in the year. Um, I took it up and did a few um, additions and amendments. The idea behind this is that um, it would provide us with some guiding principles of how we want to handle business ourselves. Um, on the screen now is what the table of contents would be, so it gives you an overview of what's discussed in the meeting rules. Um, the idea is it sets out how we do business, what we want to accomplish, and how we're going to conduct ourselves during meetings. Um, originally, we started working with Mr. Wright. I believe the draft was posted on our website for public review and comment on February the 9th of this year. Um, we did receive a couple of comments that were um, integrated into this draft now. Um, with your approval, I think we should post this again um, and discuss it during our December meeting after we've had this um, discussion and give the public a chance to weigh in if, if they would like to do so. Um, I'm going to go through a few sections briefly just to give an overview. The first being um, the purpose. The purpose of the rules of procedure is to guide the Board of Trustees of the New Township, Claremont County, Ohio, staff and members of the public in preparing for and conducting sessions of the Board. Um, the Board meeting section sets out the duties of the chairperson, um, largely rule on any motions, control the debate amongst members, adherence to the agenda, ensure the rules are being followed, so um, keeping us on agenda moving forward and uh, making sure that everyone is conducting themselves in accordance with the rules. Um, board meeting section also sets out the established order of business. So the idea is we have a flow to our agenda what, that we would like to see continue. Um, so it sets out what we, the preferences for that agenda. Um, also establishes um, the rules of order, how we want to handle business when an item is before the board for action. It adopts a, um, I'll say slightly amended Robert's rules of order, which is allowed and very typical. Um, so it sets out the rules um, by which we will handle business. There's a section next on in board meetings on public conduct. So the idea is that we welcome and certainly want everyone to feel comfortable here coming to meetings and listening. Um, but in order to do that, we all need to maintain certain um, standards for personal conduct. So the idea is that uh, members are welcome and able to be here, um, need to remain seated unless recognized to speak. No person can shout, yell, call out, or otherwise behave disruptively at a meeting. No threatening, menacing, or obscene language. Um, so, Mr. DeWitt, I hope that addresses your concern um, as well as we start to address some of these matters. Um, there's also a section, again, on public participation. Um, we encourage the public to be able to come here, address their specific concerns, bring matters to the board or staff, and speak in favor of or in opposition to matters being considered by the board. Um, sets out that each regularly scheduled meeting will have a public comment section. No public comment will be required at special trustee meetings because the agenda limits what we can talk about at those meetings but it may be considered as appropriate and necessary. Um, public comments a time uh, for the board and staff to receive information. It's not a time for debate or argument. Um, the township applies the rules and procedure to all speakers, does not discriminate based on the identity of the speaker, the content of what the speaker says, or the viewpoint the speaker takes. We're here to listen to everyone that we represent and uh, we'll do so um, for every person that comes as long as they're speaking pursuant to the rules. <coughs> Um, also for public participation, this sets out that each speaker will fill out a card when they enter the meeting hall, having their name, address, contact information, their nexus to Union Township, and the topic they'd like to discuss. Those cards will be returned to the staff prior to the meeting getting started and will be used by the chairman to determine the order of you know, people speaking in the meeting. So the idea is instead of saying, hey, does anyone want to speak, we would have a list developed already. It also helps us administratively for a staff if someone brings something up that we need to later address. I already have the card with their address and contact information, so I'm able to more easily contact them later and follow up on issues. Sets up a rule that a speaker may speak for a total of five minutes, may not yield time to others. Any document the speaker would like to provide during public comment must be submitted to the fiscal office for a distribution after the meeting, can be incorporated by reference. Comments must be directed to the board, not individuals in the audience. Um, and again, no participant may use obscene or threatening language. Um, the next section is amendment of rules, and the idea is that this is a living document. Each board can review, make changes as they desire. Um, we can decide that something works for us, doesn't work for us, and we want to update it as things go along. Rules can be amended or repealed by a majority board of the board at, and effective at the regular next regular meeting after approval. 
rules can be temporarily suspended by motion and the majority vote of the board at any time. So if we have an issue that we believe um, we have some time to discuss and would like more time to discuss, we can um, amend those rules on an as-needed basis if we choose to do so. Um, another idea set out in this that um, I'd like to bring to the board's attention is the idea of regular business meetings versus working <laughs> sessions. Um, I know currently we are just using our regular business meetings for every topic that we need to discuss. Sometimes that can um, draw meetings out of it. Um, and there are certain topics that I think maybe some education and discussion ahead of time would be helpful. So I'd like the board to consider, and I've set up as options in these rules, moving to a system by which we have regular, one regular business meeting a month and one working session. Working sessions would be um, a little less formal. Um, I would only ask staff to be here if they have a topic that's being discussed on the agenda. And it would give us a time to discuss issues in a, a preview type way so that you have a chance to hear them, ask any questions before you're being forced to vote on a matter. If the public wants to um, bring something to your attention, they would have a chance to do that um, at either meeting, but the working session would be a, a little bit more free-form discussion. Um, and I think that would help us move business a little bit more effectively and be able to preview issues and, and further discussion amongst the board, but also with members of the public. Um, if that's something that you want to consider, uh, I would suggest we work on that for our January reorganizational meeting and then we would have a clean start in January for the two meetings a month, one work session, one business session. Um, I know there was some concern that uh, the trustees raised and other people have raised about uh, limiting the amount of um, public speaking. I did a survey of other jurisdictions because I think this stuff's interesting. Um, so I brought up a couple of the local jurisdictions. Um, Sycamore Township, four minutes per speaker. Anderson Township, three minutes per speaker. Westchester Township actually has two sections of public comment. In the first session, at the beginning of their meeting, they have comments of two minutes per person with no more than five speakers. Second session, at the end of the meeting, speakers are limited to a reasonable time, whatever that is interpreted to be. Um, Claremont County has five minutes per person with a total of 30 minutes for comment time. Um, Colerain Township has five minutes per speaker. Franklin Township has three minutes per speaker. Um, I was not able to find everybody's list automatically, but these are a few of the samplings that I've seen from around this area. I will tell you from my past work, it, is very, it was pretty common to have um, some limited, somewhere between three and five minutes um, for per person to speak so that we can move through agenda items as quickly and efficiently as possible. Um, if a person needs to speak for longer than that, the board can choose to amend the rules on a particular subject but also um, would have the ability to submit additional comments and writing that can be distributed to the board so that they can have that um, matter heard, which would also be a benefit as we go towards work sessions because a person that wants to come and talk on a topic can, during the introduction can talk for their five minutes and then submit additional comments and writing if they would like to do so. Um, that is a very quick overview. Um, I'm happy to take any questions that you have um, with the board's approval, my thought would be perhaps that we think on this, have some discussion, I'll post it back on our website, and then we'll bring it back in December for a vote, which would make it effective in January. Gentlemen, do you have any comments at this time for Ms. Ayers? I'm reading this correctly, Ms. Ayers. By the way, thank you for putting all this together. Uh, I know this is a lot of, a lot of work. Um, is, it, is it the board's approval, or is it the chairman's discretion on above five minutes of public? Um, the chairman has the immediate discretion, but the board can take a vote to effectively overrule the chairman if they'd like to do so. So the idea of checks and balances is that the chairman keeps control of the meeting, but then ultimately if there's, there could be a group vote if we had that occur. Okay. Curious your guys' thoughts on all this. Um, so yeah, I'll share a couple quick comments. Um, um, <clears throat> Ms. Ayers, you're right, first posted this in February uh, online and, and, and the additions that, that you've added then would be different, so I think it's appropriate to hold anything out for comment until December. Um, uh, but honestly, the fact that it was posted in February shows you how early this board had the first discussions and conversations about it. If you guys you know, remember hearing me at least bring it up and referencing in January about um, meeting, you know, rules and running a professional and effective meeting and having a working session. So I kind of like, I really like the direction this is all going. These are all the steps that have to get put in place um, to be able to uh, execute that and enact that. Um, and 
you know, that kind of, again, in my mind, when you talk about working sessions, that starts to tie into the overall strategic position for the township. Um, that also, you know, it's not in the same conversation, but that starts to open up the conversation about, um, you know, a annual or semi-annual strategic planning session or retreat session uh, where the board members are able to basically outline, look at strategic plans with the township staff, with the administrator, and have that checks and balance and that accountability to are we accomplishing the goals that we set out to say that we, you know, we're going to do based off of what the people have asked us to go and accomplish those goals. So, um, you know, so I just, I really like the direction that this is going and I recognize that it professionalizes the process the, the way that she has um, developed uh, part of these roles here. Um, because I can think back to, and I heard a comment earlier tonight about, you know, the foul language. Um, you know, and that's, you know, don't, you know, only, I guess only I can speak from the chairman's position to both of you right now and share any kind of, you know, wisdom or guidance on that. I mean, if, um, and I'll say it in this sense, um, if you've ever, uh, if you've ever just been in this Air Force background, right, or Navy, Air Force. I blood of you yeah. by myself. <laughs> so, no, no. so definitely you should not. Yeah. So, so the point, the point of the reference is, if you've ever just been sucker punched, you're right, out of the blue. You know, sometimes it's difficult to be able to say, well, I did not, you know, did not foresee that someone, I can't read someone's mind, I didn't know what they were going to drop and say. And sometimes when that happens, a little two minute or four minute spurt, and it's a one thing, and hey, they turn around and they say something to someone, um, that's something uh, that's hard to obviously put that back in the bag. Now, if it's going 25 minutes and it's very repetitive of stuff, that as a chairman position, you're able to very easily identify the pattern there that's coming when there's hostility or there's something that's going on. And you're able to help make those course corrections and guidance on that. Um, but I think it's very important to maintain that, that bearing uh, because we can look back, I can look back anyway to, it might just be the month of October, sir. Um, it was last October. Um, um, my dad had had a fall and I was out of this meeting at the time, but um, it, um, it was a lot of back and forth and sideways and turning around to people in the audience and it was out of order. So that's a place where this, um, uh, these meeting roles, again, I took as a significant learning lesson last October, which would be important to carry forward. And I see Mr. Campbell shaking his head yes. So he's, 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 he's probably the sage wisdom to speak on any of it, uh, just from his, his perspective too, if you guys would like to hear, hear his, his, his analysis. Um, uh, but, but I hope that that clarifies to both of you too, as far as what I'm saying. Sometimes there's just, uh, I mean, in the military, that's why an ambush is an ambush. You know, I mean, it's it's you're you're not planned for, um, but you can have a plan for you know how you how you drive through that ambush and secure the area. So I think that's what we're trying to do here. So um, those are just kind of my comments on it, um, uh, as that goes. And and as either you gentlemen may find yourself in the chairman position, uh, running the meetings in the future, um, and being able to um, have this form and structure uh, that you enact on because. The other thing that, as we kind of currently set, we there, there's there's not uh, rules and procedures that are adopted, and you know previously it has been stated, well we you know follow Robert's rules of order. Well, if you follow Robert's rules of order, if you're not a parliamentarian, I mean you can get yourself into um, a whole lot of detailed uh, concerns or issues with following Robert's rules of order, being a parliamentarian, was it discrimination or was it not? And, you know, so I think it's just charts a real clear black and white um, process moving forward. So uh, th those are the kind of comments that I just have for you guys as you review through these and consider that. And then for any of the public that's paying attention, watching, then wants to view the comments and, you know, share any comments with us. So um, Mr. Dills, Mr. Becker. Yeah. Um, so first off, uh, Mr. DeWitt, I agree with every word you said. Thank you on that. Uh, also, uh, Ms. Ayers, you know, when I went through all this, I was very impressed. You did a, you did a great job with it. I know we had a draft um, earlier. There was some language in that draft. I kind of wasn't too sure about, wasn't sure what the right answers were. Um, when I read through all this and I uh, did make a few notes, but uh, nothing, not a lot of notes. So, and um, I really appreciate the uh, public getting a chance to uh, review this. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we can take their input and in, uh, in what we're discussing tonight and what we'll discuss at the next meeting as well. 
and uh, put together a, um, a final list. So I do want to kind of, with that, just review some of the some of the detail um, that that uh, I came up with. First of all, I guess I wanted to ask you a question. You mentioned that uh, some of this overrode Robert's rules, and I did recognize that, or I saw a couple of things that looked like that was the case. Uh, and I understand these rules can do that. that. That that's not my issue. But can you give me some examples of um, where we are overriding Robert's rules? Um, I am not familiar enough with Robert's rules to be able to tell you exactly. But, okay. Um, largely where this is, you'll see a lot of Robert's rules is um, the section on how we conduct business. So the idea of when there's a resolution or a piece of legislation in front of the body, how do you handle motions, seconds, voting, discussion. I see. That sets up um, what I'll let, lightly call a modified Robert, Robert's rules of order. Um, Robert's Rules of Order, as Mr. Logue alluded to, is incredibly complicated and yes. incredibly difficult to follow to the letter of the law. So the okay. idea is by setting up these rules, we're indicating how we want to handle business. And it, while it's based in Robert's Rules of Order, I don't want anyone to think we're adopting Robert's Rules of Order as is because I think that becomes unworkable. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Cause, you know, Robert's Rules, of course, is very, very global. Mm -hmm. And, and um, these rules are tailored you know, narrowly to our, to our needs here. So also, uh, we we're talking about the work session um, meeting. So I like the idea of going to twice a month. I think the public would like that as well. Um, I haven't heard any comments for a while from the public, but initially there was um, a couple of people that mentioned about going back to the two meetings a month. Um, and I think part of it also has to do with uh, the six o'clock time frame and people getting here. So I guess something I'd want uh, my colleagues to consider is for those work session meetings, beginning in January, make it a seven o'clock sort of time. Um, so you guys can, uh, you guys can think about that. Other well, couple of things here. Uh, if we, this is starting to get into the weeds a little bit. So under public participation, item six, subsection B. So it, uh, it talks about, um, you know, any resident taxpayer, business owner within township jurisdiction may participate during the public uh, comment session of the meeting. So my concern, I guess, is is that limiting too much? Uh, you know, what about other stakeholders for the township? Okay. I think about like when Mr. Martin was here. You know, okay. he doesn't have a business here. He doesn't have. He doesn't live here. Mm -hmm. uh, yet his his uh, comments are very relevant and, uh, and and germane. I don't want to be boxing out people like that. Okay. So I, I I'd like to modify that uh, that section. And the last thing I have on here is. Um, uh, also under section six, this would be subsection E. And I would like, I'd be more comfortable to add some language, uh, given the chairman more discretion. And, and I heard what you said about he already has that discretion, but I didn't read that, at least my first go through through the meeting or, or through, through, these, um, through this document. So I guess I would like to start that paragraph, uh, starting with letter E, start with the words, unless otherwise I can read this here. Unless otherwise directed by the chairman or a board majority. So that's how that sentence would start. So I, I really want the chairman to have the power to just on the fly make decisions, you know, whether somebody should go five minutes, six minutes, whatever it is. And then, of course, um, then the, uh, and, and if, then the board, if we wanted to vote or needed to vote, could vote either way on that. So. Otherwise, the way I'm reading it as is, if we wanted to give somebody five and a half minutes, we'd have to vote on that, which I think is silly. And, and I don't think that was your intention. So I think um, adding that language would be helpful, which then it gets into also what Mr. DeWitt was talking about is five minutes enough. Um, I, I think that has to be, you know, I think it's a whole lot of it depends. And uh, I think there are going to be circumstances where, you know, we're going to say, yeah, you need an extra 30 seconds, extra minutes, two minutes, whatever that is which again would need to be the call of the chairman to, to do that. But of course then those exceptions, so I guess what I'm saying is that five minutes rather than being written in stone, being more of a, um, a kind of a target time. We ask politely for five minutes if somebody needs six, seven, we could do that at discretion of the chairman. So that's really my thoughts on all of this. Yeah, prompts a couple of questions that I'll have. I'll, I'll start with that last one there. Um, Ms. Ayers, does that present, I'd like to have, I'd like to know the legal opinion, I guess, on that as far as, yes, you can have, when I'm viewing that the chairman or the board may have discretion, I'm thinking maybe we have an individual that um, 
um, has to use a, an assistive de device to speak uh, to the board, and that takes a you know more time. And we shouldn't deny them their right and their First Amendment right. But just because we like or we don't like or something of what someone's saying on a whim, being able to change it, I think that that starts to open up discretionary that's discrimination, and that would be my concern is to uh, limit someone's. So can you? You know where I'm going with that as far as my question. Can you speak to that for I me? I agree with you that I think that does open up a set of problems. It is not necessarily fatal to the discussion, but um, what I would recommend is that if we have, a, you leave the five minutes as is, um, in the event we have a topic where we, you know, we are aware there's going to be um, a lot of community interest, there's going to be a lot of people here, there would be a motion prior to starting public comment to extend the comment period to seven, ten minutes, for everyone on that particular topic so that the rules are enforced equally um, for every single person. Okay, I like that concept. Um, additionally, I will just put this out there too as far as, again, from setting the agenda and for board members' consideration. If it's something that is as she's describing, there's multiple comments or length of comments, then I ask the question, you know, are we giving the adequate resources and attention from a township to what that concern is? Is this the appropriate forum? Is it working session? Is it third party surveys? Is it directly working with the staff? Are we giving the adequate time and attention to address that concern? And is this the appropriate forum? That would be my question um, that that would go into. So and do you have a cons thought on that, Ms. Harry? I think some of this does work out with the idea that you would have working sessions because there is more time to provide feedback and comments. But um, also, this is a living document. If we try it for a little while and decide we hate it and it doesn't work, we'll fix it. Yeah. Um, but the idea is that we're, you know, the idea we're going to set out a goal and set out where we want to be, and that if we need to pivot, we will. Yeah. I mean, um, and, and one example of of the additional forums too is just like creating the uh, Parks and Rec Committee. There's an avenue there for citizens to engage and provide formal feedback to the board. Um, so I think there's many opportunities, and there will be continued I think, growth of opportunities. Mr. Dills, yeah. um, Mr. Baker, I feel I I know why you feel pressured about the five-minute rule. I get it, um, but I think there's also some individuals that take advantage of our niceness and go on for 20, 30 minutes, on and on and on, and it's 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 um, you know, we don't have all night sometimes. Uh, but I, so I think having the two meetings a month will help solve that. Um, but I, I think as far as, I mean, so hypothetically when I sit in your seat, Mr. Logue, in the future, um, you know, five minutes, and if they need a little bit extra time, okay, just, you know, you just, just try to wrap it up pretty soon. But if they take advantage of our niceness um, and it go on for 15, 20, 25 minutes, well, then it's, it's time to kind of, you know, hey, you, you got to wrap it up for crying out loud. Um, at least that's how I would run the meeting. So, um, in a nice way. Uh, so, but I, I think if, if, uh, if literally every township, our neighbors, our county commissioners are all, you know, three to five minutes, our school board, which we have school board members at 10 year old time, I believe they're three minutes, last time I checked West Claremont, um, you know, I think that's fair. And then, and then just if they go see the five minutes, okay, just, just try to wrap it up as soon as you can kind of thing. Um, Mr. Becker, I agree with you 100% because I have spoken at Anderson. I've spoken at Miami Township recently. Um, and, and I don't live in either one of those townships. And uh, I, I, I'm okay with anyone uh, speaking up here. I, I don't think that that'll be an issue. My, my personal opinion, I, I don't, I, I'm not comfortable with that being in the rules. Um, if someone lives right across the border in Pierce or Anderson and they want to come and speak because they're having an issue in Union Township, well, technically, they, they don't fall under any of this. And so, um, I would like to hear what they have to say, or or maybe someone lives way out on 32 but drives through 32, and, and like, hey, I'm having some issues in Union Township, and I want to bring it to your to the board's concerns. Well, technically, they wouldn't fall under this this category either. So, um, I, I'm okay with anyone speaking, whether they live here or not, or, or have a business here or not. Just me personally. Um, do want to ask you, gentlemen, what you thought about? I personally love Tuesdays. Uh, I like. I, I'm, I'm not. I. I We'll take a long weekend trip every now and then on uh, usually about Thursday and come back Sunday. So I, I can't stand the thought of having a meeting on Thursday personally, um, but that's totally me being selfish. Um, are you, first, I want to ask what, what your thoughts are on Tuesdays. Um, 
I, I personally like six o'clock better as well, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm all about compromise. Um, I think if the meeting goes two hours, it's gonna go till eight o'clock. If the meeting starts at seven o'clock, it's gonna go till nine o'clock and, you know, talking bedtime. Um, and then also I gotta think about, I got two chiefs over there, administrator, I got these folks over here, and they all need to go home to their spouses and all that too, so. Um, so it's just my, my personal, but I'm, I'm good with doing six, six and seven for the working session if we wanna do both. I, again, compromise, but um, that's what I was talking about. Six for the working sessions. I'm sorry, seven for the working session. Six for our standard meeting. Because, because I guess the assumption would be the working session wouldn't be as would be long. would be a quicker meeting. Would be about an hour ish. So hopefully, Lord willing. So, um, just want to give you my thoughts. I personally love Tuesdays compared to Thursdays uh, for selfish reasons. But uh, um, and then I'm good with six. But if the overall, but hey, we, we're, we're here for for the folks of Union Township. If they all prefer seven, then we'll, we'll move it to seven. Um, that's okay. I, I just prefer six as well, but whatever. Yeah, whatever you know. right, I've got a couple things to add to you on that. Um, just, I'll go backwards from where you said that. I mean, hey, this is great to be be here and the engagement with the constituents, but you know, your last comment there as far as saying being here, I mean, it's one concept I often have, and that's I get more done out talking with residents and not being, you know, in a meeting and being right here. I get more done listening and hearing from the constituents and being out in the community. So, I mean, as far as the, the, what I view as high priority and valuing of your time. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I, I like Tuesdays as well. I think that that's great. So I know that staff's kind of already at least, we'll have that further discussion and to, um, to think about in December and to think about when we really go into the reorganization meeting in January to really fir firmly set that schedule. Uh, but I know you guys are kind of talking right now ahead of time as this kind of goes hand in hand. So I'll just weigh in on that. Yeah, I really like Tuesday. I'd like 6 p.m. from the aspect of my concern always in the past was it's the staff. The staff's the ones are being asked to stay late. They're here already. You know, um, it can be 5, 6, 7 a.m. and then they're just starting a meeting at 7 p.m. and I always felt like that is so late. Um, and to get them back to their families. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, six o'clock is, is a time between uh, work and you get time to get dinner and come over to a meeting or, or be here. I mean, it's, to me, it's that earlier start is just, it's, it's more beneficial there. But I, I hear what you're saying as far as specifically seven was more of a working session. My only concern with that is, is the, um, you know, uh, one meeting six, one meeting seven, that it, it, it does it become any confusion at all. Um, for, for uh, residents. So that's, I think that's something we can work through on that. Um, um, and um, yeah, those are, I think those are the primary uh, comments there. What I did hear also, Mr. Dills, you addressed as far as the, um, the window of speaking. And I still have, um, I think I view some concern with the discretionary of when that's applied, because there's there's people that try to um, exploit the rules in the system to just bring unnecessary lawsuits against organizations. And so, if you at discretion say, "Hey, here's a few extra seconds," and someone else doesn't get a few extra seconds, mm -hmm. how are you going to defend that in court? Good good so, I think what you bring up was a good point when you reference the West Claremont School Board. And apparent, and obviously, I'm going to listen to our legal guidance on all this. But the West Claremont um, school board if they are at a three minute stopping point on their talking i mean i see their egg timer i'm assuming that's their egg timer that's been up here um this has been here for all year and we've never used it obviously um but if if it's a three minute then i would think that the rules would need to be written to the effect of you have some maximum or a cap if you wanted to do a discretionary so the rules would say five minutes but we're targeting three minutes and there's a discretionary you're, it's all on the podium. It's all on the speaker. Their choice if they want to go more than three minutes. Sir, ma'am, you're being asked three minutes. That's our rules. That's our, you know, it's, it's on the note card when they sign in, three minutes. They may use all five minutes if they want to use all five minutes, but that's where it's probably be the black and white that that's, that's the rules as we adopted and it should be fair and equal to everybody unless there's an outstanding condition as far as some type of um, disability that needs adaptive assistance. Address that point yes, particularly. please. I forgot to address that when you mentioned it previously. Um, there is law in the township, and I, I can add it to this that indicates in situations where you need adaptive concerns or disability um, uh, assistance, that you can let the board know ahead of time, and we will make adaptive 
for those needs. So that is built into the system okay. already, that if we have a concern of someone that has to leave those type of accommodations, that we would work to accommodate them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. I think we'll continue to get more feedback. Mr. Becker, do you have any more? Uh, more yeah. Comments? So I, I did want to just reiterate <coughs> for the work session, there's not going to be a lot of staff here to be inconvenient. I get your, your point on that, and, and, and I agree with it. But again, it's going to be kind of skeleton staff. It's not going to be like our normal session. Work session is going to be very different. I think it'll be a lot more brief. So I think it'd be an opportunity to bump it up to 7 o'clock is, is just my argument for that. I hadn't thought about what you said. One meeting's at 7, another meeting's at 6. That's confusing. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. And, and because, you know, we all know it's always 6 o'clock. Meetings are always 6 o'clock, unless it's a special meeting. We could call it at any time. Um, you know, I, I, I still want to try it and see how that works out. Uh, regardless, we, we can discuss more of that later. The last point I wanted to make was something that I, I, I guess I've never forgotten, and, and some people in this room might not uh, have forgotten this either. So this is going back in time a little bit, and it was a Miller Place discussion. And there was, you know, hundreds of people in the room, and the board said, I think it was three minutes per person, which was not unreasonable. You got 300 people in the room. And that includes downstairs, by the way. The place was packed. Um, and, you know, so, of course, you know, so most of these hundreds of people in the room pretty much had the same complaints and the same <coughs> things to say. You know, therefore, everybody just repeating what everybody else is saying, three minutes is certainly not unreasonable in that, circum in that situation. What comes to mind, it was the the uh, director of the Sensei Nature Center wanted to speak. He had, I don't know, a couple of pages. I, I'm not sure how many minutes he wanted to go, but he was cut off at three minutes. And I thought, you know, that was certainly consistent, but I thought that was unreasonable. I thought because of his, I thought I want to say stature, but his unique position of being the director of the Sensei Nature Center, very unique from all the other residents that were in the room, I, I thought he should have had, I, I thought he should have been allowed um, additional time for that reason. Uh, so I, I just, that's what I want to avoid in the future with, with being, you know, kind of, you know, setting, uh, setting in stone, because I think there are circumstances we're going to want people to uh, have additional time. Uh, uh, those, are, those are great points. Um, and I think, and Susan, do we outline with this rule package as far as if there's any written documentation? Yeah, it can be submitted to the physical officer. Yeah. So if it's something that's more lengthy. So I think that's, that's where that, I, you know, one way we can communicate out what the, um, you know, what the rules are, but I think the ask there would be essentially a, I mean, think of any significant presentations you've given where it's, hey, here's my, here's my highlights, bam, 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 right? Here's my elevator pitch. Here's 500 pages that I want to submit to the physical officer also to further, you know, facilitate. And, and, and I, get, I get the striking the balance with that. I mean, to me, that's also why any vote we ever take, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always, if there's, if there's uh, people that have opposition or, or interest that's different than the vote, I'm always full open to, I mean, last year there was a development, um, it was on the old Glen Esty, uh site with Provision Living, and I made the comment that uh, the people that were opponents to it, I said, they're welcome to, at the time, as a, uh, a referendum, you know, and put it on the ballot basically for the community to decide. I want people to be aware of their rights. So sometimes there's the administrative uh, <coughs> recourse and there's the um, referendum recourse, depending on if it's an administrative act or a legislative act. Um, and actually, to your point, what you bring up with the Miller Place development, that's one where uh, nearly 4,000 petition signatures came in within about a month's time after the passing of that resolution um, to make the minor modification. Well, we won't go into the details on that. Uh, but 4,000 petition signatures came in and um, it ended up in lawsuit because it did not go over to the Board of Elections. It did not go to the ballot for the people to decide. And the township's direct defense was the people did not have the right to referendum their government and speak to their government. And I just, I, don't, I think that's abhorrent and we should never be down that path. So I really respect the position that you're sharing there of that vein. I always look at what are lessons learned, how can we can take those as lessons learned and move forward. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to do here by having some type of media rules and agenda. Uh, we don't want to be in a situation ever where, one, we're 4,000 residents that says we really missed the mark with stakeholder engagement and some type of survey or response. Uh, but even if there was 4,000 residents that came in with the, you know, a uh, petition that we'd, uh, we'd, we know that their voices are heard and, and have no issue with, you know, 
uh, seeing sh that their rights are taken care of and, and, and move forward. So thanks for sharing that. Um, anything further? No, sir. Anything further? All right, so at this time. That's a question. Well, Ms. Ms. Ayers, when do you want to call for a vote for this? Uh, December. December. So I will have it out on our website tomorrow, and I'd like to bring it back in front of you in December for a final vote. Perfect. Great. That's, that's exactly where I was going with that. Is there's no action on, on that um, discussion topic for item Foxtrot. So we move forward with uh, item golf because uh, Foxtrot, if it, as everyone be clear to hear that, it will be posted on the website and she'll be able to receive comment. Uh, and then we'll be able to have it up for essentially a vote in December that if it's uh, moved forward and approved at that status, uh, then it can be enacted the following month, which would essentially be at our reorganization meeting in January, which is the appropriate time really to set up meeting rules for, for the remainder of uh, the 2023 year. 